comes off. There you go. Nope, that's top. It's fine. Why are you getting upset? Guys? Sammy's playing ads. We got audio. Yep. Just listen to some ads. It's good. It's good. Now is it okay? Hello? It works. Hello. Okay. Second, there's two channels, but it's one channel again. Is it you? All is perfect. Whew. Okay. Just gonna get my chat back up. Sammy, I need more time. <laughs> there's never enough time. Wow, just venting frustrations. Yep, here it is. For some reason, it stresses him out more than me. Yeah, you are not prepared. What is this, Sopranos? Anywho, let's carry on. Thanks, Sammy, for helping us. I just don't hear the music on my end. That's the only thing I got here. There's no music playing. Oh, okay. Or TV or something else. Okay, one more moment. Illidian? What does that even mean? Hey, we back. We're back. What's up, Trino? Okay, let's try and carry on. And let's hope that everything goes accordingly as planned. Yeah, break crabs. Okay, so we got chicken pre-marinated with buttermilk and it looks like a couple of different spices for sure chili powder or chili peppers and maybe some garlic as well oh it's a demon from world of warcraft oh sammy started playing that again i wouldn't know but hey and while we were away i went and grabbed our lovely cabbage for our coleslaw and then the other thing for our mashed potatoes today we're using garden potatoes, the first ones of the season. So I'm just going to pick out all the really big ones in there. There's a couple different kinds. I think these are the Kennebecs. I'm not too sure though, because I'm not the one that harvested them. But anywho, those are going to be lovely mashed potatoes and we're going to throw some garlic in there with them, but otherwise keep it pretty simple. Maybe use a little bit of buttermilk, a little bit of sour cream in there as well when we're mashing it. So our prep list for today, for our chicken, we are going to make a little soak with some different buttermilk than this. We're gonna kind of dry this off from the original marinade. We need our buttermilk for the dredge to stick to the chicken. So you can either leave this buttermilk plain or jazz it up a bit, up to you. But I like to season my flour instead of the buttermilk. So we need a flour dredge and we're gonna double dip it to make sure we have this awesome coating of breading when we go to fry it. And hopefully nothing falls off either. Oh, baby potatoes with dill and butter. That is something that my grandma made for us so much in the summer. So good. And then I remember the first time I made them for Sam, I called them dilly potatoes and he fell in love with them too. 
You got some nice Yukons. You're making smashed, cheesy mashed potatoes and shrimp tonight. Yum. That sounds so good. Okay, the fryer we're going to guess is probably going to take about half an hour to heat up. And like I said earlier, we're going to fry this outside. I think it's going to be really fun and it's much more safe that way as well. Don't have to mess around with a fryer in the kitchen. No time off. Subscribe for 10 months. Thank you so much for your continued support. I can't believe it. We're almost at a year. I've had a lot of long-term resubs lately and that just makes me so happy, guys. I can't believe you've stuck with me for this long, even after all the craziness of our schedules and jobs. Somehow we still make it work, don't we? So our gravy, do you guys remember the duck stream that was earlier this week from the smoked duck legs. Remember that we saved the duck fat and all the juices from the bag from it being sous vide. So I'm going to use that to make the gravy to go with this. So it's going to have this kind of smoky flavor. I thought that'd be really good. See, I knew if we kept that, it was going to go into something really awesome. And then for our sweet and spicy slaw, the sweet aspect is going to come from, I think, just a little bit of sugar or honey even is always really good with that. And then the spiciness, I think I want to throw in a little bit of kimchi and maybe some sliced up peppers from the garden, add some heat into it. And I always like to add up chopped pickles as well for a nice crunch. You don't always get to catch the stream, but you see the highlights on Instagram. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Oh, nice. You got the red knife badge now too. I post, I try to post a lot on Instagram just for the people like you who don't always catch the stream, but that way you still know what I'm up to. <laughs> yeah, I think I might drink this gravy from a mug. We, we will see. Let's check this hot sauce out, Nighty. Garlic pepper sauce, yeah, that one's pretty popular and it's not expensive, that's for sure. Four bucks for five ounces, can't really go wrong with that. Okay, so that's our prep list. Let's get started. Sammy, would you like help setting up the fryer outside before we start doing stuff in the kitchen? He says he doesn't need help, we will carry on. First things first, I think I want to dry this chicken off and get it all prepped up. We can mix up the buttermilk and season our flour, but dredging the chicken is gonna be something we do right before we fry it. You don't want to pre-dredge this and let it sit for an extended period of time because then your breading might fall off when you drop it in the fryer. Gravy life. Yeah, I have not made a chicken dinner like this in a long time. I'm pretty excited. We got a wing times two. And this smells really freaking good, by the way. Definitely some garlic in here. And then you guys can also see that every part of this still has the skin on. And to me, that's also really important for good fried chicken. You need to have the skin on there. We're definitely gonna have leftovers. Good old fashioned fry up. So the rest of this, I would just consider that garbage. I don't think we can do much with that further. Boop. Get a little pat off. And then I think I also added a touch of salt into the buttermilk brine when I first made it. So I'm not gonna add any seasoning at this point except to the flour, but I don't wanna put it onto the chicken itself just for fear of it getting too salty. So 
So I don't know who else has been watching Instagram the last couple of days, but some of you may already know that I did apply for Top Chef Canada. It took me seriously a couple hours to do this yesterday. There was 88 questions that were very personal and you had to explain your answers for all of them, but I think it's so worth it. And I'm super excited for them to review my application and maybe I'll be on Top Chef this year, who knows? But you never know if you don't try. Not that I really think I, I am the Top Chef, but I would love to attempt to get there. Steampunk with the 13 month sub. Amazing, oh, over a year already, holy smokes. It has also been a pleasure to get to know you and Tig Girl. And yeah, I do look forward to the growth of the channel and our relationship. Would love to get you up, to get you two up here at some point for a nice little visit. We need to take care of you. We're all coming into the shore, yep. Whoop, whoop. Okay, let's put this chicken aside. For our dredge, good old all-purpose flour. Is there anything that you guys can do to promote me getting on the show? I'm not sure. It just says that the judges are going to review all of the applications and the deadline, I believe, is on the 9th of August. Yeah, maybe IG, but you know what? I searched for a Top Chef Canada Instagram and they don't even have a page. So I don't think it's actually worth it. Maybe Food Network Canada would be better. But to be honest, I don't, like for a lot of people who aren't qualified to enter that application, I think that would be a waste of time for them. Like it seemed like a very serious thing. So I guess my hopes are pretty high. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Twitch and I'm kind of a big deal. Yeah, no problem, Seam. Believe me, I thought about it. I was like, I need to tag them and stuff like that, but I couldn't even find much for it. It's kind of funny up, it, up here in Canada is things are always a little bit behind. Yes, crash the wedding. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, flour, butter, milk. We got that, sorry, unless some of you speak French. Old fashioned, 3.25%. Hey, Cookie, how's it going? And I always like to do my chicken dredging in either nice stainless bowls or like pie plates are really awesome too. So choose your destiny there. I think I will do a bowl just because the edges are higher and maybe there's less chance of mess. Okay, so we don't need much buttermilk. You have to think about this when you're going to dredge the chicken is you kind of just want to use the amount of the buttermilk and flour so that when you're done with it, there's not much left over because after it touches the raw chicken, there's not really much else you can do with it. Yeah, Cookie, I, we wiped my computer on the weekend because we were having some weird stuff happening. So we thought maybe there was like a rat or something in the computer somehow. So we wiped it and so far the audio is kind of the only thing that's messed up. But thanks for letting us know. So I'm gonna guesstimate for dredging this one chicken Ooh, definitely should have shaken that first. Okay, shake this carefully. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's not great. <laughs> there we go. I was like, how come it's not thick? Maybe a cup? Should be lots. Oh yeah, because we can always add more. 
but if we end up having too much, well then you're just gonna have to throw it out. So let's not waste anything here. You remember streaming in OBS always gave you issues with audio? Well, it's been good up until today. I mean, I thought I had everything set up properly, but apparently not. There's definitely worse things. That should be enough. So like a cup and a half of flour, because remember, we're double dipping this. And flour is not really the thing that you want to add extra, especially if we're going to season it. So I'm just going to put a little bit more. A thing with flour as well, if you have a little bit extra, is it's a pretty inexpensive ingredient. So you don't have to feel super bad about throwing a little bit away. Okay, seasoning. I always like to add maybe a little bit of paprika to this. Thanks, Torino. Yeah, right? It's like, to me, I feel like maybe the video quality is a little bit more important than the audio. Yeah, cornstarch. That's a good one as well. I'm totally going to do that. I'm going to take out a little bit of this. I actually thought of that earlier when I was thinking about the dredge because we have this huge thing of cornstarch that needs to be used up. And I was like, I should totally do that. And then what the cornstarch does is it actually should give you a crispier exterior. That's a little trick. Rice flour is also really good for that. Fleischmann's. Let's do that. Cornstarch is like one of the messiest ingredients to work with. Yeah, Canada cornstarch, right? <laughs> this is BS though, it says no mess. It's basically impossible to use this without making a mess, you'll see. Yeah, your mom thought you weren't paying attention, but you were. Okay, salt, I'll measure this out for you guys. Tablespoon looks really big. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons. Audio may or may not screw up. Okay, Sammy's coming to try and fix something for a sec. Beware. You are screwing it up. Do you want any garlic powder or anything in the dredge? Okay, nope. we're good then. We're good, guys? No. Not good. It's not good? Just the it coming out of the left ear? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you guys saw I just added a teaspoon of paprika as well. So one and a half cups of flour, I would say maybe a third of a cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of paprika is what I'm rolling with. <laughs> Sammy Pants Camera Riot, it's M&Ms today, I believe. No, it's still Rugrats. 
Yeah, this is not KFC. Let's not try and remake KFC because honestly, the only person who does KFC right is KFC. And I don't have a pressure fryer to actually mimic their chicken properly. So I'm just not even gonna attempt it. This is just Sammy and Kate's fried chicken. Yeah, the little whisk. I still wanna add a little bit of cracked black pepper though. I always like that on fried chicken. A little cornmeal, ooh, I like that one too, no time off. A little bit of cornmeal for some crunch. Cornmeal fried stuff is really good. Now I would just wanna keep doing different types of fried chicken. Sammy says, okay. Dust. We're back. We should be back. Okay, mix this up. Well, it is on. <laughs> Sammy's like, where's this music at? Done and done. Okay, maybe I'll give this buttermilk a little whisk too. Boop, ba -da -doop. That can go back in the fridge. So basically our chicken is all good to go. Hey. Thanks, Samoth. He's done, guys. He's tapping out. You're from Tennessee. Fried chicken, gravy, mashed potatoes, biscuits. Oh, sounds heavenly. And garlic mash, right? I'm so excited. Okay, we'll just put this aside. Speaking of garlic mashed potatoes, I think maybe we'll use one more clove of garlic. And honestly, I love Southern food so much and I have yet to visit there. That's still a place that Sam and I really want to go. We were planning on possibly doing like Louisiana and stuff later in this year, but now we're going to TwitchCon and getting married. So that got pushed back for sure. Okay, for the garlic, for the mashed potatoes, we have this little decision to make of how we want to do this, whether we want to roast the garlic or maybe fry the garlic in a little bit of oil or just boil the garlic with the potatoes in the pot and then mash it all together. But either way, we need the garlic to be cooked beforehand for it to have a really nice flavor. Otherwise, it'll just be too pungent. Mad King, Matt, holy smokes, 14 months, yes. Yeah, I love you, Sammy, and I guess Kate too. Thanks, man, appreciate everything. I hope you are well. Shallow frying it in a mixture of oils and fats, bacon, country ham, beef, cow, peanut oil, and such. Oh, sounds so good. Oh, okay, I just saw up there that you said the Sean Brock recipe. I love his cooking so much. That's what I was gonna do, Nike. To make it just really simple, just boil the garlic and mash it into the potato. So that's what we're gonna do then. So all we have to do, this is even easier, is just peel our garlic cloves because they're gonna soften up when they boil with the potatoes in the pot. Easy peasy. You're doing all right, not too bad. Have you been streaming, Matt? Is 
Is that what you usually do, Nike, when you make garlic mashed potatoes? Friday was amazing. That's awesome. 15 subs? That's really good, man. For just starting affiliate? I'm proud of you. Okay, garlic is prepped. Garden potatoes. <laughs> we got some honking big ones in here. I think I want a little bit leftover mashed potato as well. So maybe if we do that much, should be good. Prima Sprit, how are you? Welcome in. You ended up streaming for seven hours. You didn't go to bed till five in the morning. Worth it. It's giving you life, hey? That's really good dedication. Okay, I'm gonna scrub these up and probably boil in there. I'm excited to see how these potatoes taste. The first harvest of the season. It's all in the dirt, guys. It's all in the dirt. And I'm gonna try and keep the skin on these as much as possible. I love making mashed potatoes with the skin on. Plus, that's where all the nutrients are for you. Those scrubbed off so easily. The skin is so nice and thin. Just gonna rinse out my scrub. Keep it clean. Check it out. You are so hype, Matt, but everyone keeps asking when you're gonna stream cooking. Oh, just give it time. Focus on your gaming first, and then maybe you can make a couple upgrades and end up doing a little bit of cooking as well. But I would say don't do too much at one time. You like to roast your garlic in your little garlic roaster. I've seen those before. They look pretty cool. I usually just do it in a little ramekin something like this. Just put the garlic cloves in there and then just cover them with oil. That always works well. Oh yeah, till you get your own place, that's true. Yeah, you gotta keep balance, totally. Okay, so there's a couple little eyes that I see I should take out of here before we cut this up. Just any really dark spots or places where you couldn't scrub the dirt out of. That's really all we're looking for. And you guys do know that the little circle on the side of the potato peeler is for that, right?
These potatoes are really nice. I have to say, I'm pretty pumped about this. I feel like we've done good. That. You've never had a peeler that had this circle? Oh, you should look for it then. Seriously, a lifesaver. What is my go-to potato? I mean, for French fries, I think I'll always choose Kennebex. But I guess it really just depends on what you're making as well, right? You always have the stabber peeler. That's the one that my mom uses, Matt. She loves that one. But to me, like, I love this thing. I do love Yukon Golds, totally. I do... I'm a pretty big fan of thin-skinned potatoes. Yukons are pretty versatile as well. I would say I'm not a huge fan of red potatoes. Okay, so cutting these. We just want to make sure that we cut them really consistent size for boiling. And that way we won't end up with potato pieces that are falling apart and potatoes that are still crunchy. So let's keep everything the same size. And the smaller you cut the potato, the quicker it's going to boil as well. So keep that in mind. These are pretty pristine, I would say that. The flavor and cookability of Yukons, yeah, 10 out of 10, totally. I think these might be Yukons. Walk in the daubs. Sounds good, Jen. We'll still be here. Use a hammer for the potatoes? What? Just smash them. That's a little bit aggressive, Matt. Okay, a couple of these chunks were huge. Huge. Yeah, mashed. <laughs> Would you call them hammered potatoes, though? Okay, this. Cutting in half this way first. That's a big freaking potato. One, two, three. We call them smashed potatoes. Smash it. No, that's what Nike's making. He said he's making smashed potatoes today. A hammered potato is an Irishman at the pub. I love that, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if I should have repeated that, but I liked that. You took your pin off. Yeah, I took my pin off. I wasn't ready yet. You're Irish? Okay, phew. Yeah, it's just a stereotype. It's not racist. Okay, okay. We have our potatoes in the pot. We have our garlic cloves peeled in the pot. We're using five for these potatoes. I mean, this would probably feed four to five people. I don't know who I'm cooking for, but... <laughs> so now all we want to do with this is cover it with cold water, very important. That'll help it cook very nice and evenly. Otherwise, if you use hot water, it's actually gonna start to cook the potato from the outside and that way it'll get more mushy quicker. So we don't want that. So just cover cold water until all the potatoes are covered and then we're gonna add some salt into here. Please tell you we have cheese. I actually wasn't really planning on putting any cheese into here. 
Maybe I can grate the rest of the Asiago and finish it with that. Use it up. I think we might have to pull out some butter. I think we might have to pull out some butter. What? Okay, there's that. Time for some salt. Yeah, cheesy garlic taters. We're in. There's a fly? The fly snuck in here? Gross. The worst. Okay, so I'm gonna do, this looks like about a tablespoon of salt in that handful, and I'm gonna do two of those. It's actually pretty crazy how much salt potatoes will take as they cook. Is some high? He looks lost. He's actually not feeling super well earlier today. He woke up with a pretty bad stomach ache for some reason, so he's a little out of it, I would say. <laughs> yeah, Sasha, that's always fun. As long as you don't light anything on fire, right? He's feeling better now, though. I made him a nice kind of like gingery elixir tea. So he's, he's coming back to life slowly. Safety first, exactly. Exactly. So we can just set these on the stove top. Those will take, oh, probably 10 minutes to 15 minutes to boil and cook, and then we'll strain them and mash them. So let's say all in all total time, probably 20 minutes to make the mashed potatoes. So we'll just keep that in mind when we know that the fryer is getting close to being ready to fry the chicken, then we can turn our potatoes on. Did he poop, right? That was the first thing that I said. It's literally the problem solver. It's like, oh, your stomach hurts. Well, did you poop yet? See, you guys know. Remember my mom always used to ask me that. Expendable, one, two, three, four. Thank you for the follow. Okay. So we can start to cross some stuff off. We did our buttermilk for our chicken, our flour dredge. All we need to do now is fry it. Our mashed potatoes are prepped. So to dress our mashed potatoes, I always like to start by mashing in some cold butter and then either sour cream or buttermilk to kind of loosen it up and add some more creaminess. I will probably go pick some chives from the garden and chop those up and add them last minute. But that's pretty much it. Next, I think I would like to start doing the slaw. That way it has a little bit of time to marinate. I always find that coleslaws are better made a little bit ahead of time. Oh, you like the biking vid? Yeah, that was us yesterday. We went out like early morning. What was it? 9 a.m. I think we went up the hill. Didn't even see one person. Whereas usually, if we go there around noon, the parking lot is like full. It was really fun. So that trail, Dust Pirate, is actually an old train track that they turned into a biking and hiking trail. And we can actually get from here, basically out of town, all the way into the city of Victoria. It's really, really handy. And then it also kind of leads you up to all these other biking trails. It's called the Galloping Goose. I'm gonna take that outer leaf off. And I think that's gonna be doggo snacks. I just don't like all the little dark spots on the ends, but I'm still gonna wash it up for her. When in doubt. Feed it to doggo. Sammy has the fryer lit outside, I believe. Not sure if he has put the camera onto it yet, but let's take a quick peek, see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell him to turn the camera just a little bit down. So do you guys 
have one of these deep fryers at home. We usually do a deep fried turkey in there for Thanksgiving or Christmas, etc. So good. So this is what we're going to use today. That way we won't heat up the whole dang house. It's looking good, Sammy. Good old fashioned fry up. So we just got to install the drivers for the amp. And yep. I'll be able to take it back to the mono and turn the stereo. Okay. And then I'll just okay. Yeah, I did not know that geese can gallop. <laughs> geese are crazy. <laughs> geese are crazy. <laughs> Jen, my friend Jen, she bikes on the pass in Vancouver where a geese almost got my butt. Sammy thought it would be funny to bike through a whole flock of geese that was on the biking path in Vancouver one day. And obviously I was behind them and all of the geese just start flying. And there's literally one flying behind me, like right here, just honking. I could feel the air from its wings. And I was like, it's gonna get my butt. <laughs> Matt, your fryer got used so much the bottom is black. That's impressive. What have you done? Yeah, we still want to do a crawfish boil, but I don't know if we can source those here. That's the only we thing. Source those here. I've tried. Mono audio. I know, chef. I know. I don't want to start and stop the stream again. That's the only issue we have. We're just missing a driver for my amp. That's all. Yeah, I think they use too high of a flame. I would say so. Okay, so I always like to use a mandolin when making slaw. That way you can get the cabbage sliced really nice and thin and consistently as well. But if you want to practice knife skills, then go right ahead. Sasha, yeah, I didn't actually even notice that it was mono. Well, all the people with headphones will know. For sure. <laughs> Okay, probably only going to use half of this. I won't mind though if we have a little bit of extra slaw left over. And then this cabbage, not your typical green cabbage. This is actually a Savoy. So the leaves are really curly. Yeah, head people or headphone people are inferior. The one time. First things first, we're going to take our core out. I actually think this light is not needed at this moment. Yeah, there we go. I was like, why is there so much glare? One more little piece up here. What? That's some good cabbage. Oh yeah. Hey, Miss Molly. Good to see you. How have your streams been? Van Al Handyman with the Twitch Prime sub. That's my dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for supporting me for 15 months already. That's it. Right from the beginning. You, supported, you missed a couple. Supported like 25 years in your ass. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah, it's good crunchy cabbage. So far, the weekend has been awesome, Miss Molly. 
We have a long weekend here in Canada. So we have an extra day off tomorrow. We're streaming today, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's going to be fun. Move this this way. Okay, so you saw that I quartered that half cabbage. What holiday? I think usually it's just called August long weekend. I don't know. Yeah, hi, Dad. The block, Sammy gave me a glove instead. Thank you, Matt. This is what I bought with the mandolin. August long weekend. It just says it's Provincial Day, so it's BC Day. Yeah, but and like, then it's like New Brunswick Day, Saskatchewan Day. So it's just so a day to celebrate to all the provinces. Yeah. But each one has to have their own. Weird. Okay, yeah. let's get suited up. Actually, no. Sorry. Cut resistant BC glove. Day used to be in February. Right. Yeah, an excuse to have a paid day off of work. I haven't had this in years, you guys. Years. This is my first. Yeah, this is my first long weekend that I actually get paid for it. It's not just like, oh, well, you always have Monday off, so you don't get paid for it ever. <laughs> okay. Let's start slicing this up. Oh, I guess I should. Bring the blade back a bit. It's always good to do a little test swipe before you start doing all of it. See if you're happy with the thickness. I think that's great. We don't want to go too thin because then everything's just going to like get soggy and fall apart. So there is a happy medium to this. And as you can see, I'm not slicing it the long way because then the cabbage will get too stringy and be hard to eat. Yeah, August long weekend. I thought maybe that was like the wrong terminology, but that's what I've always known growing up. It's like, oh, August long, we're going camping. Mmm, that's really good cabbage. So we are going to heat up the fryer oil to, I think, 350 Fahrenheit. Because you have to keep in mind, we're going to drop the chicken in, which is probably still going to be a bit cold. And that's going to lower the temp of the oil, which we actually want to happen. We don't want to cook or fry the chicken at a high temp because it's going to brown before it's fully cooked through, especially with these big pieces like a chicken breast and a whole chicken leg. So we actually ideally want to be frying the chicken at an oil temp of around 325 to 300 Fahrenheit. And so basically we have to watch when we first drop the chicken in to see what the fryer first drops to. And then if it doesn't drop low enough, then we can lower the heat and monitor it that way. But having the right oil temp is very, very important for fried chicken. I would hate for it to brown too quickly and then for us to have to finish it off in the oven. Yeah, that might still happen with the breast. Yeah, that might happen with the breast, it's true. We'll see though. I'm going to try to not because I feel like fried chicken should be fried the whole way. Sounds great, Miss Molly. Good to see you in here. Guys, can I have a shout out for Miss Molly Makes, the fellow food streamer?
Thanks, Nike. You guys should go check her out. She has a pretty banging setup. I like all her graphics and stuff. Really cool stream setup in her kitchen. So what's everyone else making today? Nike, I know what you got yeah, cooking. Nice, Sammy. Fryer oil is already at 225. We're rolling here. How long you need for potatoes and stuff? 20 minutes. Really, that's it? I thought it would take a little bit longer. Okay. I thought it was nine minutes for wings though. Yeah, I know. I was guesstimating like 12 probably is what it would take to fully yeah, cook. Uh, yeah. It all depends on the browning. Yeah, it's true. Fried chicken, all depends how dark the skin's getting. You don't want it to get too dark, that's for sure, because then it just tastes burnt. I know the six ounce best to say you have like nine minutes. Okay. Your brother's cooking chicken, you think? It smells like chicken. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That means you get the smell of fried chicken in your house when you're not having Yeah, it's almost like smell a vision, yeah. Torino. Almost. Okay. Successfully mandolin the cabbage. And now I put all of the scraps that wouldn't go on the mandolin aside, and now we can just touch those up with our knife. That way we won't waste it. Great thing about quitting smoking almost 10 years ago, your, your schnifter is coming back. That's crazy, hey? How much it affects your sense of smell. What about taste, though? I've heard taste as well. At least that's what my mom said. Holy smokes, Jonatone's rating with a party of 53. Welcome in guys, thank you so much Jonatone. Hope you had an awesome stream today. What, and geocaching gal? I love geocaching. Maka Waka, good to see you. No time off, you're making bon me with some local farm raised pork chops, yum. And homegrown pukes. Sammy, thank you for gifting the sub to Maka Waka. We've missed you, man. I hope you are well. It's so hot out, hey, Jen? Yeah, nice short walk. I usually try to not even walk the dog during the day, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Jen, I was telling a story earlier about biking on the seawall with Sam. And we biked through a huge flock of geese. And one almost was like biting my butt behind me on the bike. Just thought I would let you know this terrifying story because you're already terrified of biking. <laughs> yeah, apartment life, exactly. The dog must be walked. You're a good dog, mom. Yeah, banh mi is the Vietnamese sandwich, exactly. On like the most delicious buns, such good meat in it. They have some teeth on them, right? It's like I wasn't lying. I was actually fearing for my butt. Okay, cabbage prepped now to flavor this up and turn it into a coleslaw.
I'm sorry guys, bear with me on the audio thing. Yeah, they are fearless, totally. Okay, I always like a base with apple cider vinegar for my slaw, so it's not really gonna be a creamy coleslaw. This is gonna be more of a fresh vinaigrette style coleslaw. And sweet and sour. Gonna add a little bit of kimchi. Thought that would be really good. I think I'm actually gonna use maple syrup for sweetener. And I always like to use pickles for some crunch. I'm gonna grab some of my homemade ones. Gotta use them up before I can make more. little fresh chili pepper from the garden. I think it's going to get pretty spicy. Just a little Thai red chili, but those little guys are pretty powerful. Your mom's gyno. Thanks for the follow. Did you miss the chicken and potatoes? Nope. We're still making everything. We are currently heating up our fryer oil for the chicken and we just have to turn the potatoes on on the stove top and then mash them up. Yeah, I made my own apple cider vinegar. So there's the date, October 2018. So we have an apple tree in the yard. I thought, hey, why don't I try making my own apple cider vinegar? So that was from last year. And it actually takes a couple of years for your homemade apple cider vinegar to get the right acidity. So this is actually not as acidic as the store-bought stuff. And then if we, usually we can look inside. There's like a mother kind of floating in there. So that's how we make the vinegar. And basically if you buy the store-bought organic unfiltered stuff, then you can take some of the mother from that and make your own. That's how I did it, and that's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I would say it has a higher sugar content. Honestly, Jen, peppers are so easy to grow. We bought four pepper plants from somewhere like Lowe's or Home Depot and planted them in the spring. They do their own thing. They're really easy to take care of. Yeah, we're almost at the point, Trina, where we're going to pickle some peppers. Okay, so I'm going to start, I think, why don't we add our little bit of kimchi into here first. And we're going to use a little bit of that liquid as well, I think. So I think for making this, why don't we make our little dressing separate? And that way you guys can see kind of the amounts that I'm adding in. And then we just have to chop our pickles up, put our little bit of kimchi in. Those are two awesome crunchy things that will add some contrast to our slaw. This is the stuff that we made last week. And I just put it in the fridge yesterday, I believe. It's good. So basically I let it get to the point where my landlord, AKA my mom that lives upstairs had to message me and be like, um, 
the house is smelling. What's going on? <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, we're making kimchi and it's going to smell like farts for a couple of days. That's when you know that you're ready to put it into the fridge. I didn't actually know that peppers were self-pollinating. You just taught me something new, Torino. And then I had to do something I've never done yesterday in my garden, which was hand pollinate because our winter squashes weren't getting pollinated where they were in the yard. So we actually had to cut off the male flower and like rub it around in the female flower, do the dirty deed for them. And hopefully that helps. Because all of our fruit was just drying up. It's quite farty, yes. Sammy would know. Bubba Gump, yum. Thank you for the follow. Can we get into this pickle jar? <sighs> no. Okay, secret trick. Take the back of your knife. Hey, hey, hey. So not the blade. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to carry on and just tell you about it. And just hit around the seal a couple times and it should loosen it off. If you don't have a muscle man around. But if you have a Sammy, well then, you should just take care of it on its own. Yeah, Bubba Gump. Fried shrimp, boiled shrimp, grilled shrimp. Oh, okay. Our oil is almost there, guys. It's time to turn on the potatoes. That dude looks buff. As F, that's Sammy, aka Om Dog the Chef. Not really. That's my fiance. Is there egg in here? No, I didn't put egg in. Sammy wants egg in the buttermilk. Egg and buttermilk. For some extra adhesion. Just turn the potatoes on, guys. Medium high heat to get them boiling. Remember, we got the garlic cloves in there already as well. Yeah, homemade pickles from the cucumbers from last year as well that we grew. <laughs> yeah, weird flex, Sam, but okay. We demand a flex. Flex. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I said the F word. Fiance. <laughs> yeah, he usually walks around nude. Nudes. Sammy has just fortified our buttermilk for the dredge with an egg. If you guys missed that. You're going outside with this, Biznass? Yeah. You need it now? Yeah. Can I just chop up the pickles? Let's go. Holy. Now he's rushing me. I ain't rushing. Well, I'm Polish and temp Ukrainian. Temperature keeps on going up. Okay. Well, calm it down then. Okay, uh, I'm going to chop up these pickles kind of nice and bite size to match our kimchi. I think I'm only going to do two at a time. He's pressing his luck. I know. Okay, he calmed it down. Can't rush the process. We got to show everyone what's going on. I guess he's maybe hungry, guys. His belly must be better. Mmm. Those pickles are awesome. So they're kind of sweet and sour. I'm kind of terrified of chopping up this chili right now. I'm going to say that it's going to be really spicy, especially because we have the seeds in there as well. And then let's make sure that we wash our knife and fingers off ASAP after putting this in here. 
And don't touch our eyes, for sure. Or genitals. 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 <laughs> Who knows what that's from? What did you put in? Garlic. More garlic? Yeah. We already have five cloves in yeah, there. He needs six. Holy shit. Now he says he needs six cloves of garlic in there. <laughs> yeah, genitalia. <laughs> oh man, you guys. Yeah, it's only one chili and it's tiny, but it has a kick. Okay, so a little bit of kimchi juice. That's about a tablespoon. Let's do our little bit of apple cider vinegar. Maple syrup to balance it out. You found the vid. <laughs> Everyone, click on that at your own discretion. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of maple syrup to balance this out. Mm. Oh, that's the one that's smoky from Sam's parents. Homemade, boiled over wood. Mix that up. We'll definitely be adding salt to this mix, but I wanna taste this first. Soevi, thank you for the follow. Soevo. I do have some OG apple cider in here. So I'm gonna add that because that was almost too sweet. I always keep just a little bit of store-bought stuff just in case. Lemon could also be really good in here. Nice lemon juice or lime. Limey is always an option. Mm, that's better. It almost reminds me of the dipping sauce that you get at Vietnamese spots for vermicelli bowls. Yeah, it's almost totally like that Torino. Thai chili sauce, except it's also missing the little bit of funk from the fish sauce. Prime lime time. We might finish off with a little bit of lime or even just some zest. I still like to do black pepper as well. Jalapeno would be awesome in here. Basically any kind of pepper that you like. But jalapeno might be a little bit more floral, which could be nice. You would not eat this. <laughs> And I'm probably going to add just a touch of olive oil, just so it kind of helps coat everything. But I'm trying to keep it as fresh as possible because fried chicken and mashed potatoes is pretty heavy. Yeah, the slaw helps you poop, Matt. Sammy just wants mayo? Why? You don't want olive oil? Okay. Sammy's yelling from the bedroom. Backseat cooking. Usually he just lets me cook. This is new, guys. This is another consecutive stream where it's like, oh, who's, who's cooking here? You don't have to do it. No. 
Right, Matt? Right? And you thought you loved him more. Well, here's the truth of the matter. Do you get to see the chicken fry? Nike. Of course we do. That's why I'm not allowed to do it right now. Oh, now he's complaining even more. No, that's why I said we're not doing the chicken so that they can see it. Oh, yeah. Or I just have a dog already. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I'm done being slow with the slaw. Listen, perfection can't be rushed. I'm not used to using my half ass here. Typically like to use my full ass when I do things. But everyone's all huffy puffy today. And I don't know what's what. I'm gonna have a little tasty taste though. That's actually quite delicious on its own. Mmm. The spice is creeping in. I really like the crunch. I would say it's not overly spicy. It's actually really balanced. I want to chop a little bit of chives or scallions into this, though. I think it needs it. Okay. Slaw. Complete. We will finish that up a little bit later. I think we should get this chicken dredged though. Apple would be delicious as well. Mm -hmm. Green apple would be super good in there. You want that, Sammy? Sure. Okay, we'll put that in after. Okay, dredging station, my friends. I'm gonna move all this over that we can put it back onto the tray. And we are going to, are you gonna do parchment? I was gonna maybe do a rack. What? Oh, now he's got slaw in his beard. Sucka for dredging. Do you want me to dredge and put it on parchment and then when it's fried, we put it on a rack? Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on the tray. And then after it's on a rack. Well, the tray is a little wet. That's the only thing I'm trying to say is that okay. I don't want the bat or the dressing to okay. stick. Yeah, Sammy's gonna do the chicken. Putting them to work. Green papaya, yas. This is a free range chicken. It is, it is. It was, it was. Or it was, yeah. Once upon a time. Sammy's pants are amazing. Yes, they are. We are trying to figure out where all the characters are from. There's like Ren and Stimpy on there, Rugrats. And we couldn't figure out the other characters. A throwback. Was that the double dip? Yep. Yeah, that's Nickelodeon, totally. What flour is this? The mixture, oh yeah, Matt, you came in after we made that. So the mixture we did, one and a half cups of flour, third of a cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of paprika, and then just some black pepper. Really simple, because the buttermilk marinade that we had, had like chili flakes and garlic and a bunch of spices in it. So the chicken is already flavored. So I think it would be smart to kind of keep the dredge more simple at this point. While Sammy's doing that, I'm gonna put a couple of the slaw ingredients away. Looks like our potatoes are just coming up to a boil. No panko, yep, there's no panko in there. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? We have found in the past, guys, that panko makes a chicken brown too quickly. It's 
smoky duck fat and such for gravy, I'm in. You mix it in with your flour. Yeah, we used to do that in the restaurant as well. You're good. You're good, Sammy. One more. Potatoes just started boiling. We're at 350. Holding steady. It's almost fry time, guys. Should be pretty amazing. Tea time. Okay. And then I'm just trying to quickly get this gravy made. So smoked duck fat is what's going on here from our stream earlier this week and just a little bit of the liquid. So basics for home style gravies is we need to mix the fat with a little bit of flour to make our roux. We did this when we made our mac and cheese the other stream. And then we're gonna slowly add in some chicken broth. Which I'm gonna actually cheat a little bit today, guys. You guys know I have the base here from the duck, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of this better than bouillon chicken with some water, just to bulk it out. But this stuff is honestly really good, I have to say. If you're going to choose store-bought chicken broth, this is the stuff. And we just want to make sure that we mix that with hot water so it dissolves properly. We don't want any salty lumps of that. So I'm going to aim to make about two cups of this gravy. Sam, do you want me to turn the oven on just in case? Okay. I have faith in myself. Sammy's got faith. Oh, this smells delicious and smoky. Smoky goodness. Did I have enough buttermilk? Yeah. Perfect amount. He's leaving us with the mess. No. Once the potatoes have been boiled and drained, yes. Okay, two minutes. Okay, then start frying. Ready, guys? We will do this. And I'm going to turn on... This should be outside. I'm going to turn off the music. And hopefully you don't hear double me. Let me know if you guys hear an echo of my voice. But I'm going to try and do this so that you guys just hear the chicken. How is that though? Right, Matt? I don't know what's with him today. I think he slept too much and now he's like a grumpy toddler. And he's just trying to like rush through the stream. But I'm trying to like enjoy my time with you guys. Can't 
rush it. I just don't want the fried chicken to end up getting soggy if not everything is ready. You can't hear the chicken? Damn. Okay. How about that one? Nope. I'm gonna try and add the audio source quickly. Your thermometer would have fell in by now. Open. Oh my God, doggo, be careful. Well, I'm going to turn this music back on for us then. <laughs> yeah, go away. Be careful. Okay, I'm checking our taters. You want to make sure that the potatoes are completely boiled and have zero crunch left in them. This is just canola oil that we're using. Okay, I'm going to start to make this gravy up. No, you guys aren't seeing me at the stove top, but I think you'd rather see the chicken fry, right? That's way more exciting. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start with a third of a cup of the duck fat. How's it going out there? Good. Do you need what, sorry? The rack. Yes, that's what I thought. Yum. Okay, so all we're doing for the roux, melting our duck fat, and then slowly whisking in the flour until it makes a paste. And then we slowly stir in our chicken broth so that there's no lumps and let that come up to a boil. And that way we know that the flour has been cooked out. Otherwise, it'll have a really starchy flavor and it won't be very appetizing. He's got his glove on. Okay, that. Doing like four things in here. Oh yeah. Be very careful with hot oil. Grated apple, you guys say. Bringing this to life. Pardon? Okay, okay, 
our oil is melted. It smells so smoky. I think this is going to be amazing. Yeah. A little bit more. So the roux should not stick to the pan at all. It should start to kind of lift and clump. That's when you know you have enough flour. And now we're going to add in a little bit of the broth at a time. Did you not hear me earlier, Sam? I said I'm using the leftovers from the duck. No, I didn't. Okay. That's fantastic. He wasn't listening, guys. Wasn't even paying attention, hey? Yeah, chicken is in the oil and it's coming out. No, we're fighting. We're totally fighting, Matt. <laughs> We've never actually fought. Steam, you had the best thing ever the past week. Deep fried Brussels sprouts. Yes, right? Insanely good. That's what most restaurants do nowadays. But it's hard to say no to that for sure. It has some of the best flavor. What did they serve them with? We used to do them kind of like Caesar salad and put like a Caesar-y dressing on the side to dip it, garnish it with Parmesan. So good. Okay. Gravy has been made. We might have to thin it out, but I think that'll be fine. Because I made a pretty concentrated broth. Now we just got to wait for it to come up to a boil. Potatoes are basically there. I think they're just starting to fall apart in the pot. Yeah, send them home with pay. You can think about what you've done. You can see the hostility. I, it's not me. I'm just trying to have fun. Sammy's in a rush for something and I don't know what. going to keep standing up for us, guys. Yeah, let's let's bond over some good food and candies. Okay, quickly doing this apple. I think he's hangry. Yes, you guys totally called it. That's where we're at. We got a hangry Sammy. We've not seen this in so long. Yep, they can sense the hostility. They're like, why are you guys fighting? I'm like, I don't know, I didn't do anything wrong. Sammy's hangry and he doesn't even know that feeling anymore. It's okay, we're almost there, dear. <laughs> he says he's sorry. Oh, it's okay. I know how to deal with it. Maybe he has gas. Do you need to toot? Nope. nope there's no toots. Oh, that's Do you need a Snickers? Yeah, he's like a cranky baby. 
<gasps> we got Doggo. I'm gonna go and try and take a quick photo of this fried chicken before it gets taken out of the oil. Oh, there goes this thermometer. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. I'm sure you guys heard the sizzling. Please tell me you did. We still love Sammy. Always. It's Sammy. Uh, we don't need the oven. Sammy says we don't need the oven. Yeah. The breasts are 145. Okay. Okay, guys back in. So I just mandolined the apple into the coleslaw like Torino asked. So I thought that would be delicious and add some extra crunch. Chicken just came in. We just popped it in the oven so it rests there and stays warm. I am going to strain out the potatoes and we're going to do some mashing right away. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> let you guys check out our gravy, which it looks like I still need to thin it out just a bit. She's thick. Look at those bubbles. We got some gravy, friends. Good old-fashioned gravy. So really, the thickness here, we just want it to be able to coat the back of a spoon. That looks perfect. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Samuel will be okay with that. That's quite good. Quite good indeed. What am I okay with? Our smoked duck gravy. That's a freaking good gravy. That is... Perfect. Thank you. I didn't add any I salt or anything. That. Oh, he's going to drink it. I don't add, don't add salt to it. No, no, I know. Okay. Strain those tatties with the garlic. Now it's time for the dairy. Oh, yeah, sausage and biscuits with that would be quite delicious. <laughs> yeah, oh, you made food? Your brother made chicken and sauerkraut pierogies? What? I want that. That's what I want. Okay, rules for mashed potatoes. Always mash in the butter first. And that's what helps them not get too gluey and starchy. And don't skimp on the butter, okay? You can't be scared. Butter is what makes it really freaking good. It's not the sour cream. It's not the buttermilk. It's the butter. Maybe one more nub. And that'll be happiness. He likes to be able to eat it and not drink it. Some people are crazy, Matt. Yeah, pierogies. 
I'm in. This is actually perfect timing, I would say, because the chicken would probably rest for 10 minutes at least. Yep. Now we start mashing. Nice yeah. Basically, once all the butter is melted, then we can start to add our other dairy. Yeah, sour cream, that's my favorite as well. These actually look a touch dry. I think we need more butter. Is it Ramsey that freaks out when you put sour cream in mashed potato? Why? Uh, I don't know what that was. Something fell. He's an elitist. Well, he does own like the most amount of restaurants in the world. He's like the ultimate restaurateur. Okay, that's looking great. Time to sour cream it up. And Sammy, can you please cut a nice handful of chives? There's your scissors. Let's do one, two. Oh, he makes it more a puree. See, I like more mashed. You guys know I cook more like grandma than I do like Ramsey. Oh, what does Kate cook? Grandma food. I like traditional food. Gives you all the feels. See, now this is coming together. Starting to look more creamy. Yeah, grandma food, 10 out of 10. Doesn't go out of style, ever. Yeah, that's starting to smell nice and garlicky. Mmm. Do we want Asiago for saltiness or just salt? I would be perfect cooking in a nursing home. Don't you feel like my love of the food, though, would be maybe wasted? Like, I would... I would want them to appreciate the food, not just eat it for sustenance. There's too many dietary requirements as well. That's enough. I don't want it too liquidy. No. Why not? Well, if you really want to. I don't know how sharp those scissors are, though. He's snipping the chives. Freshly snipped chives. <laughs> exactly. Today, our menu, a lot of soft foods. Feeding seniors that don't have any teeth. What kind of chopping is that? That's mediocre at best. So I tell you, I gotta switch to a knife. E for effort. It was. Oh man. Yeah, let's just put some <laughs> chives in there. <laughs> oh, you got a B plus from Cookie. That's the exact method Matt uses on his beard. <laughs> All right, Sammy can take care of your beard then, Matt. 
sending him over. Can you not do that to my knife? What? If I would have did that with this guy's knife, oh man. Oh, I'm supposed to do this instead? Oh, Pushing his luck. You have a lot more for him to trim. I don't want to know, man. We're there. We are there. Let's check this chicken out. Let's chiggity check this chicken out. No bacon bits. We don't need bacon bits. We already have the smoky duck gravy. You don't always need bacon and cheese, although it's always welcomed. Just some things can be kept in their glory without relying on those two things. Like a gosh dang good fried chicken. Taking this out of there. Too obstructing. Yeah, that looks like some good breading. What was the temp, Sammy, when you took it out of the fryer? What was the temperature of the chicken? Oh, uh, internal. I was like 325. That's really overcooked. <laughs> you said out of the fryer. Yeah. The fryer was 325. Uh, chicken breast was 145. This Kay. was 152. Okay. I think I want to go for an epic chicken leg. I don't know about you guys, but let's do this plate up. Yeah. Sammy's got his plate. Yeah, the last four pieces are for me. These are the chicken breasts for you then, Nike. I know you would love it. Okay, I always like to start with mashed potatoes and then the gravy and then we put the chicken and then the slaw. Very important question though. Do you guys create a well for your gravy in the potatoes? Got to see who we're working with here. We're exploding out. We let it run over, but I like to keep a little bit just for the potato itself. Oh, we'll just, oh. That was some crunch. Oh, a little piece mm. fell off. That's good. Did you guys hear that? Excuse me, just getting this out of here. Are you able to move the trivet, please? Moving. <laughs> Heck yeah, I heard that. This is it, guys. Grandma's 
Sunday chicken dinner. Fried deliciousness. Okay, we'll get into this in a sec. You guys know the deal, yo. Might actually go outside because the lighting is amazing. Got it. Oh, I can't wait to taste this. Okay, guys. Time for our close ups. Yeah, KFC just got replaced. This is Kate's fried Apple chicken. Really good. Nice, Dust. Thank you so much, man. Garlicky steak. I'm in. It already heated up in here though. Okay. Potatoes with gravy. That's delicious. Mary Brown's. What? We had that in St. Albert when I was growing up. It was actually pretty good, I have to say. I don't know if it's 10 times better than KFC though. It depends on who you got working there, I would say. Mm -hmm. Those potatoes and gravy are too good. Okay, ready? You guys want me to bite the chicken leg? Take a huge bite out of it. It looks like it's really freaking hot still, but we're getting into it. Yeah, shout out St. A. <laughs> That's where we grew up. The breading on here is insane. Yeah, two pieces of chicken for Matt can of potatoes in forest lawn. I was Lacombe and Deer Ridge. That was the first stream you watched, Sammy Lick the Plate. Did you see what he just did? Just took off all the breading. Yeah, it's pretty juicy. Okay, even if I try and pull this apart, it's just gonna get messy. <laughs> like the bones just pull out. See if we can pull all the bones out. And just be left with the chicken. Nope, not yet. Okay, I want this little piece of drumstick though. Yeah, it is super juicy. Buttermilk, guys, that's the trick. Mmm. Really good flavoring. <laughs> Nike called it. It was too hot, Sammy. Too hot to hold, too hot to handle. Well, Matt, the Tony's is on the way. Mm -hmm. Remember, we ran out. This is a next time thing. Don't worry though, Matt. We reordered it. Mm. 
Rook, how's it going, man? How's your Sunday? Sammy's coming in with some blueberry hot sauce. What's the spice level on this? Oh, about a nine. It's a nine spice? What the hell? Good luck. <laughs> Sam says it's good. We picked it up at Save on Foods, Jen. It's called Pepper North is the brand. Mmm. It's got sweet and spicy aspect to it. When I start doing that, you know it's spicy. Get the cold air in. Mmm. <laughs> so good. I just want to eat the breading. Crunch. Oh, now I have hiccups. Okay. I'm that person that eats spicy stuff and gets hiccups. And then it just makes it really hard to eat because I don't want to choke on anything. Thanks for posting, Matt. I didn't see it, Jen. Oh, man. Yeah, that'd be me. Like, I can't even talk. It just takes over. Let's have a little bit of this slaw, hopefully cool things down. Mmm. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. Cookie, what? Let's see this. We're on fire, up in here. It's burning hot, we're on fire. What's the next verse? I don't know. If it gets too hot. Go. Gotta cool it down. Look at, can you guys see this sweat on my face? I'm all dewy. I'm definitely sweating. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's covered. Thanks so much for the thousand biddies, Cookie. Holy smokes. Do you have anything else that you would like to request for us to make? Keep giving us so much stuff. Yeah, everything's on fire. This is fine. Is that what that is from? Is that meme? When everything on your life is on fire, but it is fine. Mmm, that's the breast. Yeah. That's perfection. That's juicy. Not at the moment, Kate. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. Lobster mac and cheese? We just made that, you cray. Oh, Matthew. Sammy going in for round two. He for sure was hungry then. Okay. You guys always know that when we get to the eating point, it means that we're wrapping things up and we're going to hand you off to another lovely streamer. Who is it going to be today? Rook, are you streaming? You're gaming. We see a sushi day on. That could be awesome mm -hmm. for us. We can go visit sushi day. Did I post the recipe on Discord? No, but I did link the Serious Eats version of what we made with the buttermilk chicken there. So Southern fried chicken that they marinated in buttermilk and basically did the same thing as us. It's so good. Who's from St. Albert? Chips for dinner. She's a friend of Julia and I. Julia! Julia! Julia. <laughs> 
You can hear me on their stream. What? Oh, on Rook's stream. Amaze. You're welcome, Rook. You are welcome. Okay. I'm going to go raid Sushi Day, a wonderful food streamer that lives in LA. Let's go check her out. Her and son. It looks like they're doing curry and naan and all kinds of deliciousness. Sounds awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for everything today. Sorry about the little hiccup in the beginning. We're going to get that fixed for tomorrow, for sure. And so we are going to be streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as well this week. Do you want to do what tomorrow? Lunch? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stream a little bit earlier than today. We're going to cook lunch tomorrow and then Tuesday, Wednesday, we're back to work. So we'll be cooking dinner on those days. So stay tuned. I'm going to post the new menu for the week right after this. And that way you guys will know what's coming up as well. My stomach won't be upset. Tomorrow. It's posted both on my channel page and on Discord as well. So you have two places to check out what's coming up. Yeah, Sammy isn't hangry anymore. It's fine. He's back to normal. Shh. It's okay, Sammy. It's okay. The hot sauce got me. Yeah, I'm still sweating. Like, wiping the sweat off my upper lip. <laughs> yeah, burp him. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look at that. Delicious. Yeah, it's hot in here. Okay, <laughs> let's go show some love. Thank you very much, Cookie, for the thousand biddies once again today. That's very generous of you. Thank you for so much support since you have found us on here. Vanel Handyman with the resub today. Matt, thank you for the resub as well as Steam and No Time Off. Thanks so much, guys. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.